What do we got for tonight from our loving audience online, the YouTube, Help Me, TikTok, <clears throat> anything not been able to ask then just email helpme at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah, get the books, it's a part of the curriculum that educate yourself, don't think that the internet will always be open. The time may come, you look at what happened. All of a sudden an earthquake came and power out everything out for that area. Something may come and the area that you're in no internet, no access to anything. At least you have the book, you have the resource to, to read it, to keep the mada, to be absorbed within the reality and take a life of being a student in which you're writing. Better to put your hand to write so that your destiny change, inshaAllah. What we got for tonight, inshaAllah? Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If the power goes out, will the app not work? If the power goes out, the app has some that works because it doesn't need internet, some of the information is on, the overhead is on. But if the power goes out after two weeks, your phone won't work. No electricity, yeah. Then you'll, you'll be hoping you had a book, <laughs> Allah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Can our reality and seven names be unlocked without us knowing it consciously? Thank you Sayyidi. can be unlocked without you knowing it consciously but you have to take a conscious effort to know yourself. So why would it be unlocked? Means that the, the one who knows himself will know his Lord. One understanding of the holy hadith is that you have a, a Rabb above you. Everyone has a Lord that governs them. 99% of people their Lord are the vices. Right? So someone who smokes is his lord, the lord of smoke and tobacco. The one whom drinks, his lord is alcohol. The one whom has other vices, those are his lords. So the shaitans are lords over people. So they think they worship Allah but in reality no, they, they worship the Lord. Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Or that governing them. That's why the inner struggle is the real jihad, the one whom struggles and, and fights those lords. They attack the Lord of smoking, they attack the Lord of, of bad manners, bad demeanor, bad character. Only then when they attack all of those bad vices and destroy those Lords, now they move towards Rabbi al -Ad, the higher, the heavenly Lord in which they can understand what governs them. Means then their names have an ability to be Lords over them and that each of their names carries a reality in their paradise. Every paradise you have a name in your paradise and that name is a lord over you and that it has to dress you and bless you and bring you up into your reality. But you have to kill the outer ones, all of the vices and bad character. So that's the importance. So that's why the inner battle has to be, it can't be something unconscious that we have to be consciously trying to fight the bad character, meditating, contemplating. The concept of meditation again, what is a satellite that the shaykhs 
life when we make a connection it's like uh, you're sitting in the sun all day long, no problem. You're not going to really burn anything like that other than maybe get a little bit crispy skin. But the shaykh becomes like a magnifying glass. If you put a magnifying glass now and don't put it on yourself, that's not recommended at all but you put that magnifying glass and now put it on a rock, it has the ability to melt the rock. The same sun that you are enjoying, if you magnetize with a magnifier, magnify that light, it can burn and melt a rock and make uh, like a crystal out of it, huh? Same way. So when the servant understands how to make their tafakkur, or visualize the shaykh, he magnifies that light of Prophet and pushes it towards them. As a result why? So that they burn from their solid matter to a liquid state and from liquid to gaseous. So they have three states of matter, those are all in the meditation books I'm sure inshaAllah, timeless reality. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we heard from one of your previous talks about energy transmitting into food. If we are invited to someone's home for food and they are not Muslim or not on the same path, is the food okay to eat? Can negative energy enter the food even if their intentions are good? Yeah, there's a reality and then there's a social responsibility. So knowing the reality is just to be informed and know knowledges. So of course there's negative energy everywhere and you will be affected by those energies. So now to safeguard because you need to eat or you need to keep fa family relations or friend relations, then you make your wudu and you make your du'a upon everything. And that that du'a lessens any negativity and brings the barakah and the blessings upon your food. So there's all of these precautions but definitely when you study the energy in the energy book all of it is based on energy. That what somebody is, is feeling they put energy. If they're depressed and angry they put that energy into the food. If they're nervous and anxious they put that energy into the food. So the food is like a sponge that absorbs energies and as a result we sort of digest all of these energies. And then the one whom uses siwak because energy first comes into the mouth and then affects all the teeth and then goes down into the heart. So as soon as they're about to eat they can make their siwak and make their du'a and inshaAllah to again reduce any type of negative energy. But you can't now just be fearful of everything and hide in your home. We've described that before, the knowledge is not meant to make us to be fearful but to understand and go forward and face everything, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa Thank you for your yesterday's talk on the reality of Silat and Reiki. Is Qigong the same thing as, same thing as many Muslims these days are using that for healing as well? Yeah, I, I, you know, we ask me all the specifics <laughs> of all these different things. The, the gist of it is that follow Islam, Qigong, Wang Chong, and or oh, that's a band. <laughs> so I don't know, all, all these gong and, and these things. Yeah, uh, everything has a spiritual reality. And these people were calling spiritual beings for their help. They were not flying because they were flying, they were flying because the jinn were lifting them. So you see tri tribes in Africa now are, are putting out videos of that where the guy dances at a thousand miles an hour and then all of a sudden starts to lift up in the air, yeah because the jinn are lifting them to impress the people. So they were calling upon things, they are now calling upon things and as a result those are very dangerous. So in these dangerous times you try to stick with your path and your understandings and your practices and your energies. If there was a, a movement then no problem 
But if they ask you to recite something then you recite Islamically with who and Allah, Allahu Haqq, Ya Ali and then they would fight with the name of uh, Imam Ali So anyone wants they can search the, the origin of Shaolin and the 28 moves which I don't know if they even keep it on the internet anymore. But one of the stars in the flag of China were the… for the Muslims that almost 1400 years they've been in China and they were the fierce warriors for Chinese governments. So the Chinese kingdoms kept the Muslim nations because their fierceness, fierceness in warfare and that was because of their understanding of martial arts. And that their connection, a spiritual connection to Imam Ali Salam that came and taught them the 28 moves of the 28 huruf. Then later when the world decided to come against religion and spirituality they had then the advent of communists and all sorts of movements around the world with Ibn Abdul Wahhab and communism. They basically killed the spirituality out of all these practices and then those Paths became 12 moves, 13 moves and they completely took off the reality of the huruf and now they just do their physical practices and, and, and pain resistance and meditation. But the origin of those realities were deeply based on Islamic spirituality. So any type of martial arts and, and uh, exercise practices are alhamdulillah more powerful when they meditate and connect with the shaykhs. So when they meditate and connect with the shaykh and then their, their zikr is in their movements then the movements alhamdulillah have an immense power and immense opening. And with those everyone has a specialty. So the one whom does martial arts then when they meditate they have to ask for understanding within their field of interest. No? So when a computer programmer meditates what happens? His heart is expanding on computer programming. Oh I see the similarity of the madad, that's how all these knowledge is coming out. The binary code, the slave unit, you know the people who work in technology they have the master unit, slave unit. Everyone who works with computers knows there's a main computer and then the slave computer that is taking from the main. They're like dummy terminal or nodes, well those are computer people knew. So when they would meditate Allah gives everyone to their understanding. Doctors in medicine would understand the inner reality of uh, medicine and that's how all these sciences came. The one who was interested in astronomy would meditate and Allah would expand for them the knowledges of the heavens and the planets. So everyone has the ability that based on the field they're interested in when they make their connection and then ask the shaykhs for more understanding that open for me the understanding of these huruf, understanding of, of how is it used in my field of interest and that to expand my heart into its understandings. And everyone has a specialty uniquely given to them from Allah but you need the tool of the muraqabah to achieve that. That's the whole purpose is so that that light can come to you and open that reality and then once you know it's been opened by the madad you don't claim it as your own because you know the source of what came to you was from the shaykhs, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa for meditation do you recommend using a veil and what is preferred black or white? Yeah it, does, it doesn't matter but when they're at home they can use a, a veil and uh, black has one energy, white has a different energy and they basically can figure which one's more comfortable for themselves. And you don't want to draw attention to yourself uh, in front of other people. So then now it becomes nafsani, so that is best to do at home privately. So that when you meditate you veil yourself from anything and any spiritual energy around you. And then it has its own reality that can begin to open, inshaAllah. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam. What are the differences between the tariqahs like Silsala Naqshbandi and the Silsala Naqshbandi Mujaddadi? Yeah, the Naqshbandiyat al Aliya are the Dagestani sheikhs that, you know, went uh, from Shaykh Khalid al Baghdadi, then came back into the Dagestan area, and, and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, Shaykh Sharaf al Din Dagestani, Shaykh Nazim, Sultan al Awliya. So th that's their secret that opened up and those whom are following Mujaddadi then they believe that their shaykhs from India took the secret from Shaykh Khalid al-Baghdadi and then went into India. So the, they have their way and they follow their way, they found it to be of benefit and alhamdulillah. Then we follow the Naqshbandi Dagestani way from Shaykh Sharaf al Din, Sultan al Awliya, and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, and then Mawlana Shaykh Nazim al Haqqani Qaddasullah. <coughs> so each tariqah has their way, if they find it to be powerful and uh, rewarding for themselves, then alhamdulillah it works for them. And if Allah destined somebody to be in that tariqah and they find it again to be useful and practical, then they use it. And if they don't, then they come towards Naqshbandi and a Haqqani way, inshaAllah, Shaykh Nazim's uh, way and Shaykh Dagestani's way, which we believe to be the most powerful and most common. But again, that's we, we have to believe because that's what we practice, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Ya Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what's the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad meeting Imam Ali at the Miraj journey? Please forgive my bad adab for I am jahil. Uh, we, we have it in the, in the articles I think, from Mawlana has articles on, on uh, secrets of the different levels of the Miraj and, and Prophet sends, uh meeting of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the reality of Imam Ali Salam on the Miraj but those are all very specific so I, I can't quote that as something that I would understand so we have to read from that and then talk about that. But I would imagine that there are many and many different realities of, of, of these holy souls that were predestined, means they're not physical beings in which Allah named, you're going to be this name, you're going to be that name. But when Allah created the light of Nabi Muhammad He partitioned that light and from that light came the Khalifas like an atom that they have Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Sayyid Umar al-Farooq, Sayyidina Usman Qani, Jami al-Qur'an al-Majeed and Imam Ali Salam. These are four ancient realities that circumambulate the center of the Divinely Throne named as Muhammadun Rasulullah So it's an ancient reality from the world in which Allah created that light. So these are not named characters from a physical world. So that's why people think that, oh the physical happened and Allah named these names and they sort of… Uh, they were the right person for that time. And that's such a silly way of understanding anything that when you study from the world of light that the light is so ancient, so qadeem that when that happened is not something that anyone can understand. So when Allah brought that light into existence and wanted to be known by it, it became known by Muhammadun Rasulullah then wanted to be known by because he partitioned that light and made Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. So these are ancient, ancient amazing sort of realities of souls. So all of these souls are of an ancient reality. So that's why then they have anciently been always in that reality and that anyone who needs a support from the center of that kingdom then these four are always supporting, have always supported. And they are the source of all these realities and these dressings and these blessings. And then the reality of Ahlul Bayt, that what is the reality of Sayyidatina Fatima Tizari salam, again Imam Ali salam, Imam al-Hasan wa Imam al-Husayn as salam, 
So it means these are from when Allah was creating that light and then taking the light and partitioning these realities. So they're very ancient. The Isra'i wal Maraj was then for Prophet Wasallam's physicality to go back now and be acquainted with who his real identity is. And that's an opening of a adab that as soon as he enters into that reality everything behind is now flowing into their realities. So it was a rahmah for all creation because you're not allowed to know yourself, truly know yourself until Prophet enters the door first. As soon as Prophet entered the door all the angels included didn't know themselves. Sayyidina Jibreel found his had and his limit. Say, Ya Rasul, I can't go beyond that and we described that before that that's the glass that separates between that reality. Why Sayyidina Jibreel can't go beyond that limit? Because he doesn't exist at that reality. His existence is on this side of that reality. But where Prophet can go right to where the edge of the fire of Allah and meet into the face and the presence of that fire, Sayyidina Jibreel can't be there. He doesn't exist there, he can only be behind where he exists. That was the adab saying, I don't even exist there, there's no way for me to manifest there. That existence is only between you and Allah and that's the boundary of La ilaha illallah facing Muhammadun Rasulullah So the miraj was then a miraj for all creation. And that's why the, the clarification for shaykhs and awliya is that people are not making a miraj to Allah Their miraj is in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that they move into their Muhammadan reality to know themselves. And that's why the big Prophets of Allah all asked from that reality. Sayyidina Musa wanted to know himself. So he had to go to know Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Can you please speak a little bit about when Sayyidina Muhammad Sallam stood upon Imam Ali Sallam's shoulders and Imam Ali Sallam said, I saw the whole creation within Muhammad Rasulullah Yeah, we have that on Insana Comment. That's the whole book is based on that. So inshaAllah get the book Insana Comment. And uh, you can speak more about it by asking uh, more questions on it. So alhamdulillah it's very good. But get the book and sign a comment and from that hadith Allah opened, Prophet opened the reality of the, the insan a common, the insan, the, the creation that is perfected. And all creation is within that creation known as Muhammadun Rasulullah in which Imam Ali Salam saw all of the heavens and all the earths within the reality of Prophet until he looked up from the neck and he said, from the neck above he wouldn't speak about it but he said it was the throne of Allah that I saw the Arsh of Rahman from the point of the neck means the adab was not to talk at that time about that. But all of creation exists within Muhammadun Rasulullah with Hadith al Jabr. What was the first thing Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulullah that Allah created? says, the light of your Messenger. When there was no Kaaba, there was no throne, there was nothing. Allah none of that was in existence. That when Allah wanted to be known, He brought in Muhammadun Rasulullah. From that light Allah created paradise, from that light Allah created Bayt al Mahmur, from that light Allah created a Arsh al Rahman. Why would Allah sit on, on a, a light that He created from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad No? So means that all of this is for Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah not inside His creation. Allah is far beyond anything that could be understood by creation. But all of that was created from the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah the chosen one Nabi Mustafa all the angels, the throne, the paradises, everything you can imagine 
all the lights of the Khalifas, Ahlul Bayt, everything is from Muhammadun Rasulullah So then that's the immensity, immensities of this light, this love and this way of ishq and muhabbat and good manners for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad There's no reality outside of it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa uh, Is the partitioning of the light of Prophet at the beginning of creation related to the cell division process for new creations of the world of form? It's a nice analogy. So when you look at a cell it's one, then it splits into two, then it splits into four, then it goes into eight. That uh, cellular growth is, is one understanding, it's, it, I don't know if it's exactly like that but that, that has its own reality and I'm sure alhamdulillah there's something based on that <laughs> but Allah can free to divide that light and fashion that light however Allah wants. So it doesn't necessarily match the speed in which the cellular growth moves inshaAllah. But something similar for people to look. How from one cell something multiplied and then keeps multiplying in its growth, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah When some sorts of negative energy rippling and moving around the heart, does this sign of weakness of faith? Forgive my ignorance, I'm a weak servant. No, energy again is not a sign of weakness of faith and in an energy world everything has a has a, a frequency that you can be strong in faith and many disturbing frequencies all around so that's nothing that can be done and in a time in which they're using energy as as uh, uh, everywhere for every type of reason they're using energies from phones to machines to devices as a result that energy field can be very disturbing upon people and the frequency in which they resonate and that was the discussion last night. But strong in faith doesn't mean that you're, you're shielded from that. You try your best to build yourself and begin to make a shield but again portions of that light and energy still come through that shield. Not as great as devastating the person but it's still going to come and affect them, make them dizzy, nauseous, sick. So this is a, a, an energy difficulty on this earth and the more we study it, the more people understand it then they can prepare on how to build their energy and they should think in terms of energy. You're building it or you're losing it, halal and haram should be understood by energy. Then it would make sense in your commonsensical understanding because you watch some of these YouTubes on these people who go to Zahiri shaykhs and they have every type of ridiculous question about halal and haram. Well all you need to do is think about energy. Do you think that this action is going to build your energy or you think it's going to bring your energy down? If it bring your energy down don't do it. Or at least know that it's going to bring your energy down and if you choose 10 like that for the day you know you're depleted by the end of the day. So what did you do to bring your energy back up? And that was what we described was the concept of sadaqah and charity. That Allah knows that when we're depleting our energy going here, going there, 800 sins that humans can do in a day. Most people don't know more than 10 if they try to name them, 800. So then what then becomes the, the great neutralizer for all the wrongs we do is sadaqah. So every time they do something they give sadaqah, before the night ends they give sadaqah, why? To take away the badness and bring my hisab up to 10. So if I did have 20 wrong then I gave sadaqah two times that's 20. Then I did my prayers, my namaz, my zikrs, my awrads, then maybe that's way above. So that when you think in terms of energy 
you can balance and do an accounting now and the accounting can become very real when the person is doing their hisab every night. I did this, 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 this and these were wrong and every wrong you do is one point. But every good you do Allah gave you ten points because He loves His creation. Then you can say, I did these wrong and I know these are my negative points and now before this night ends I want to get my account into the positive, inshaAllah. You may have just answered this question but, uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, we are doing all the practices but we are feeling so tired and exhausted lately, no energy to get up. What does this mean? Yeah. Heavy energies, that there's a very heavy tajalli and it's just going to get stronger as we're entering into Ramadan. So just keep doing your practices and uh, struggle to get yourself up, keep yourself in wudu and do whatever practices you can because these are the energies that are dressing the soul. And the immense amount of negative energies that are all around the earth and uh, it, it's a great conflict. That's why we said on these, these holy nights, these lights have to be deposited into the soul and deposited into the account of people so that not to attract the attention of more negativity and then more negativity comes towards that person. So but doesn't mean that the tajallis haven't stopped. So there's an immense bounty Allah dressing in the month of Rajab, Shabban and Ramadan for what opening upon the earth. So we saw that Rajab opened up with you know hundred thousand people passing away and tens of thousands of buildings have been destroyed. So this is just then the beginning of the theme of what's going to be happening in Shabban and Nisfa Shabban and Laylatul Bara and that what Allah is going to write. So when Allah is writing we look at these calamities then Shab al-Bara should be very important for all of us to observe that and that pray that Allah write good for us and that good for our families and our year that's coming and our sustenance and our destiny. That's a night in which Allah writes that destiny and His goodness and His badness and that Salat al-Khayr and the hundred rakahs of Nisfa Shaban and their importance. That for where we came deficit in our accounts and in our actions that that Salat to make a goodness for us and to dress us from Qur'an and dress us from Allah's satisfaction. So these are, these are important uh, events that are opening. And that uh, Ramadan to see what then is going to be the manifestation of uh, Rajab and Shabban. We pray that with all these actions and these practices that Allah dress us and bless us with good character and love and muhabbat inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. A couple of people are asking this question, uh, they're noticing a lot of pain in their feet and legs lately. Yeah, the energy, we said before I think the energy has become very negative now, very, very, very negative. So a lot of bad energy is entering into uh, everywhere as a result and your feet are the first places to pick up that energy. So keep yourself in wudu, keep your feet always into wudu and uh, if it's difficult walk with the khuf and uh, different things so that not to, to be sort of too distracted by that and do your salawats and do your, your connection inshaAllah and that Allah inshaAllah make it to be easy for people and, and not too difficult inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Does speaking a lot have the same energy, reality as moving inappropriately as you mentioned yesterday? Yeah, it create an energy. So the, the speaking a lot and the, the movement of the mouth has a, a lot of negative energy. So that, that's a, a difficulty. And uh, especially when the, the talking it has its own frequency and the information has another frequency and that's the danger. So just nonsense talking is going to then produce uh, negative energies 
and the one listening to it is going to be affected by nonsense talking and, and the darkening of the heart. If it's semi-spiritual then it can be a source of misinformation and that becomes again a difficulty upon a person just listening to a lot of things, a lot of different talks, a lot of you know, all confusing things then confuses their own signals. So in a time it's like anything else like a pandemic of spiritual contamination it's best to do your zikr, do your practices and try to keep a path of you know uh, of silence in which to be as silent as possible, do your practices and, and to avoid so much conversation in which uh, everything then goes sideways and becomes negative, becomes ridiculous and then becomes useless. That's the dangers that people begin to talk about one thing, begin to argue about another thing and then become completely uh, sort of tampered by shaitan. InshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum, Shaykh. Wa alaykum as salaam wa How do we know if feeling tired and exhausted is due to a tajalli dressing or a negative energy attack? Yeah. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> if the energy is, is negative and the energy is dressing you and you're feeling weakened and tired, then you try to wash, keep your wudu, do your salawats. Negative attack, you feel pain, you feel a, a very bad energy coming, you feel like you know like something grabbing you, something attacking you. So when, when people have real negative attack they can just determine negative by uh, different than being lazy. So negative attack is, is when something is after you. And you feel the pain, you, you feel the difficulty of that attack until you can recite and, and push that away. Just being lethargic then has many variables, that's why these, these questions are not easy to answer. Because does it mean like you, you, you don't take vitamins, you, you ate the wrong foods, too much sugar, too much carbohydrates also make you lethargic, you know the wrong diet is, is going to mess up your energy field. So it's a variable of 10,000 different directions so we try our best to, to keep it somewhat viable for, for our audience to get a general understanding. But in reality there's 10,000 variables involved. What did you eat? Did you eat a lot of sugar the night before? Of course you're not going to wake up the next day. So your diet is going to have a great effect on your how lethargic you are, your carbohydrates, your sugar went up. You, you, you ate too much of one thing, so so many different things are involved in energy. The main thing is sort of suit up, show up and do your practices and do the meditation, do your zikrs, do your awrad. If negative come, now fight it, keep doing your zikr, keep doing your awrad. You're not going to run, there's nowhere to run. So you, you, you're going to face it and you're going to fight it. If you run, then 10,000 times more negative energy coming after you. So you just sit, do your practices, do your connection, do the salawats, keep yourself in wudu and keep going. So there's nothing to, to ask about, you have to just keep doing the practices. You can't retreat because if energy finds out that you're, you're, you're given up they come 10,000 times more against the person because now they're not connected and they're not doing their practices. That's the danger, that's why I said in the beginning of this whole talk is shaitan comes and begins to make somebody to have very bad energies, very insulting character. Why? It's because he's attacking them and separating them from a source of power. And as a result of their bad manners, bad character and, and sort of demeaning attribute he's pulling them away and then he'll begin to attack them and bombard them and their families with difficulty. People whom have families have to be very cautious because uh, family is a, its own circle of energy. When you're disconnected from the shaykh and the zikrs and the practices well then who carries the burden? Always ask ourselves in an energy world, who carries the burden? When you disconnect from these circles, disconnect from these shaykhs 
and you come home from crazy world of working and the other person comes home from crazy world of working and the kids come home from crazy schools that are filled with children from all sorts of backgrounds carrying burdens from all sorts of families and you come into this little room of your home, who carries the burden in that room? The one who has the most positive energy which would be who? The children because they're mazloom. The younger they are the more purified they are, they're like sponges from heaven. So means then the negative energy of that home is now going on to the children. And that's what shaitan wants, cut from the zikr, cut from that shaykh, insult him, be rude, demeaning. Now you blocked yourself from that rahmah. So Mawlana shaykh said, anyone who distanced themselves from a shaykh, they distance themselves from Allah's mercy. Because when they're close to the shaykh, the fires and the flow of positive energy is flowing to them, which combats all of that negative energy in their home. It comes in and begins to push away all negative energy so that the shaykh's energy is then cleansing. What shaitan wants is do something rude, say something rude, be something demeaning. So, why? You, shh, you close that connection. And now you're left with yourself and by yourself. And then now that energy of the negative energy has to go somewhere, where does it go to? It goes to the children. And so then the kids become sickened. And that's what shaitan wants is to begin to destroy the units. And that's why don't distance yourself from pious people, don't distance yourself from their zikr and their connection and you keep the connection by good manners, good actions. In every action the shaykh already knows what you're intending. So people send off certain things thinking that they're going to be demeaning and no one will know but the shaykh knows exactly who's doing that. You type something they already know what your intention was. You set out something they know your intention, right? They can even use an ability to go back and see what you're doing but they don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's, it's, it, they're, not, uh, they're not ignorant people, so Allah gave an ability. But the importance is people to keep good manners, we said this whole way is just based on love. If people keep love and keep good manners even through whatever discomfort and anger they have and they keep their love and keep the good character, keep the good manners. That's a najat for their family and a salvation for their family and for themselves. And in the end you always ask yourself like a great crime movie, who benefits from this? You know when you start acting all bizarre and you start to distance yourself, you sit down and meditate if you're a meditating person, who benefits from this? Do you think I'm really hurting the shaykh when I start acting bad? Do you think anyone is able to do that? Say, no. You cut your rope that was from you to the shaykh, you didn't cut the shaykh's rope. So then who benefited? Well definitely you're not benefiting by doing that, the shaykh is not benefiting. So who's the third guy in the room? The shaitan is benefiting. So you wake up and say, why would you want shaitan to benefit? He's going to now destroy you if he isolates you. So tariqah was based on keeping a strong connection that I'm not going to bring a shaykh down, there's no way to bring the shaykh down. I'm only going to cut myself from his presence and that I'm in big trouble if I do that because you're like a, out there in space on a lifeline breathing oxygen. If you cut your own oxygen you just go flowing out into this wonderful black abyss of space. So that's not something anybody wants. Imagine now if an earthquake came. What, what do you have as a connection? What do you have as a source of protection? What do you… who are you relying on? So you see the world goes upside down and they can't even find people buried in their own building. What one shout and ten stories of buildings have collapsed and crushed everyone. So even more than ever we're relying upon our madad and our connection that every night are we good with Allah we're good with Sayyidina Muhammad and that we're good with awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard and that we did everything that needs to be done and that do we have a, an alert system and a warning system within our reality that you know maybe an alert system came for certain people 
that they were alerted at three o'clock, they got up, washed, put their clothes, put their shoes, waited outside. And many weren't in their buildings, many weren't in the place that they were supposed to be. So Allah's great and just a matter of people whom have good manners, good character. And if you had good manners and good character and you died, at least you died with good manners and good character and your end result inshaAllah to be shaheed and to reach the state of martyrdom and enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah Allah's, Allah's great, we pray that everybody be safe, everybody have good character and uh, these blessed nights and uh, next Wednesday, Thursday opening of the holy month of Shaban and preparing us for the month of Sayyidina Muhammad and uh, Shab al Barat, Laylat al Barat, the, the 15th of Shaban, inshaAllah, that Allah is great, Allah's rahmah and mercy to be upon all our families, and that every good deed and every action to be multiplied with the immense light and immense love, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon, wa salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.